Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, Welcome to District of Raga. My name is Nishtha and I am the founder. We're excited to be presenting a series of live stream events in efforts to stay connected to you all. We would like to thank the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts for their support to make these programs available for free. Um, today, we are presenting a special workshop with Kamal Jeet and Jas Aluwalia of Absolute Focus. In this workshop today, they will cover the key concepts of North Indian classical music, including rag, thal, spirituality, and improvisation. They will be taking your questions throughout and end with the live performance. Please feel free to type your questions in the comments at any time. Again, thank you all so much for joining, and I'd like to now introduce Kamal Jeet and Jess Alwalia. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Thank you to NIFTA and the District of Raga and the Kennedy Center for putting these wonderful live streams of concerts and workshops on. Um, before I continue, I have to acknowledge this momentous, amazing weekend. We have a woman vice president in the white, not so white house who <laughs> represents every shade of brown to black, everything in there, in this nation of uh, America. So yay. We have a woman, oh my God, it has happened in our lifetimes, in our daughter's lifetimes. They're gonna be inspired to just work hard and they can become whatever they want. Mind blowing, it's just awesome, I'm excited. <laughs> okay, back to plan. We're talking about music now. <laughs> so yeah, thank you Nishta. We're gonna be doing a music workshop, Indian classical music. Um, just going through the basics, a little bit about us. Um, a little bit about the instruments, so uh, you can look at them a little bit closely um, on the screen. Uh, just key concepts, what goes into a musical performance, why do we make decisions that we make, how do we actually like interact together, not us, but you know, a, a tabla player or an instrumentalist or a vocalist, what goes through our minds. Um, so we'll just be touching upon all of those and possibly do a shortest performance at the end if we don't talk too much. But please uh, write in any comments uh, throughout. Uh, we, we'll be able to read them or Nishta will let us know and we'll try and answer them as we're going. Or you can wait till the end and we can do the same thing with question and answer. Okay, so let's get to it. So my name is Kamaljeet. Um, I learnt Sandhu from Sri Dharanvi Singh and Sri Hajinda Pal Singh. And uh, now I'm a disciple of Pandit Shiv Kumar Sharma, who is the pioneer of Santur, this instrument here in Indian classical music in India. And uh, I'm Jazz. Uh, I'm a disciple of Ustad Tari Khan. Uh, he's one of the most uh, prominent tabla players in the world today. Uh, so why are we telling you about who our teachers are? Um, it's because our teachers are our universities. Uh, they're, it's just the first point that goes on your resume. You say where you went to school. This is, our teachers are where we went to school. And it's not like a four-year program, it's, it's a lifelong relationship and the learning never stops. Um, and the, the teachers, the, the gurus and the great uh, musicians have a responsibility to pass on their knowledge and wisdom to the next generation. And, and so that's what, what they do. And then uh, every generation passes it down to the next. Um, the, the, there's no written notation. It's all an oral tradition. It's uh, the knowledge is passed down from the guru to the disciple. And on the student side, it's it's our responsibility to do riyaz and sadhana. And so those riyaz sometimes loosely gets translated as practice, but it's more than practice. It's it's a form of meditation. It's it's uh, things will be revealed to you during riyaz. You'll find answers during riyaz. Um, and it's something that's done with like you know great discipline. Um, this is this whole system is known as like the Guru Shishya Parampara or the Ustad Shikir relationship, um, and this is how Indian classical music has grown uh, for all these years. Uh, there's new pedagogies emerging in Indian classical music. Good word, huh? I know. Says it right there on the slide. <laughs> it's a so, pretty big word for Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> the there's. There's, there's new ways that are emerging on, on how to teach and how this uh, tradition can be spread. Um, and it, that's pretty new and we'll, we'll find out if they work or not. Um, but uh, we learned in the more traditional manner and, and it worked for us and maybe uh, the new methods will work for the new generation. 
Um, so Indian classical music is uh, so if you've been exposed to any Indian music, uh, like if you listened, to, if you watched a Bollywood film, or you like did Bhangra, or you have been exposed to Indian classical music, and the reason for that is Indian classical music is the root of all Indian music, um, and that's pretty unique, I think. Um, you you can't escape uh, the Indian classical music train. <laughs> Not that you'd want to, but <laughs> you cannot escape. Uh, so if you're talking about guzzles or qualis, kirtan, film songs, geet, bhangra, like Gujarati folk, whatever it is, it has its root in Indian classical music. And I've been fortunate that I've been able to grow up with um, around like some some great musicians. So like on the bhangra side, there's like Dalair Medhi, and like on the film side, there's like Sonu Nigam, Mika Singh. Um, I've hung out with Nusrat Fatili Khan and Rat Fatili Khan, um, and these these guys are all in different genres. But there's not a day that goes by with, where these guys are not talking about ragdadi or practicing classical music or uh, you know coming up with new compositions or listening to classical music. It, even though you may think they're in you know some genre that's far off, they're not. It's a part of their daily life. Indian classical music is is there, and and same for the great film composers. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty neat that Indian classical music is is the root of, of sort of all music of South Asia. Okay, so I'm just going to show you the santur uh, up close. So here we have uh, the santur. This instrument here is uh, researched and developed by Pandit Shiv Kumar Sharma. Um, so it, he, he made this particular instrument so Indian classical music can be performed uh, on, on this instrument. So just looking at it, it's a big box, empty box actually, it's just a sound box, uh, with uh, 91 strings stretched across it. Um, on this side are the tuning pegs, this side is where they latch onto. Um, each bridge is made from wood, rosewood, and this white strip is bone, and on each Bridge is three strings, our three strings stretch across. Apart from these three down here, these have two strings. And this special little note here, which is called the Chigari, which has four strings. So before every performance, I have to tune the whole rag that I'm playing from bottom to top. So it takes a while, <laughs> but it's fine. This, that's the unique beauty of this instrument. So we have to put it on our lap. Uh, to stop the resonance because it is a sound box we don't want to be too, it sound like a big reson resonating box it has to be a little bit sweet so some of the vibration gets uh, muted by our bodies um, so it's not too up in the air it, you can hear each clarity of each sound and each strike um, we strike the string with a wooden mallet uh, this is uh, a walnut wood mallet is that better? no um, we hold it like this. Uh, different people hold it differently, but Pandit Shiv Kumar Sharma uh, said this is like very ergonomic. It's your skin, your arm is very relaxed. Um, it's very fluid to hold. The fingers are all relaxed, and you just do a little bunk, flick, flick of the finger there to make the sound. So it's just like this. The notes we use in Indian classical music are Sa Re Ga Ma Pa Da Ni Sa Sa Ni Da Pa Ma Ga Ni Sa Okay, so the reason um, research and development was needed to uh, create the magic of Indian classical music on this instrument because you probably heard it's very staccato, it's a you just hit it and it makes a sound So if you've heard Indian classical music it's pretty fluid and there's lots of uh, sliding between notes called mean and there's lots of gummocks and stuff like that which is oscillation between the notes so Guruji thought well we have to do it on this instrument because if we don't do that it's not Indian classical music there's no uh, deep emotion that we can take out of it by just da, 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 doing that um, so this curve at the end of here is what he came up with uh, so it's a uh, gentle uh, sliding between each note the sustain of the note. 
so we can keep the note elongated like that. So this really helps to soften the staccato of the instrument and bring in a lot more glissando. So this is a really, really revolutionary idea for the sandbur and portraying Indian classical music on it. Um, so I'll play a phrase um, in, and then you can tell the difference between me just playing it staccato and how it feels when I play it with glissando. So you can you can tell the difference that how one feels and how the other feels. Okay, so that's basically all of the sandu covered. So <laughs> your turn. Uh, so let's talk about the tabla. Uh, it's made of two pieces, um, and together this is known as the tabla, not tablas, which a lot of people get confused. Um, so the two pieces, the left side uh, is called the baya, and this is usually made from copper or brass. Um, that's a pretty beautiful one. Yeah. The maker uh, added some decoration. <laughs> uh, so the, 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 this is known as the baya, and it's the bass drum. Uh, it produces a bass sound. And as we're going, you'll see that in tabla, there's, uh, this, uh, there's this relationship between male and female that, that is present throughout. So from down to the physical characteristics all the way through the compositions. So the baya represents the bass or the male drum. You can sort of see... Um, it's, it's got a bass sound. Uh, you strike it with these two fingers here. Um, the daya is made of wood. Um, it's usually like black shishim wood. And uh, it is the, the female side, and it's the, the treble drum, so it's got a high pitch sound. Uh, it's they're both covered with goat skin. Um, and there's this black spot in the middle uh, known as the shai. And this black spot is sort of like the magic of, of tabla. So it's made of iron filings, rice, um, and all kinds of other secret concoctions that the tabla makers don't tell us. Uh, and just like we have uh, in music our teachers that pass the information down from one generation to the next, uh, tabla makers also do this and they pass uh, their knowledge and wisdom down and their recipes down, uh, especially for this black spot known as the shai. And so each different tabla maker, their tablas will sound slightly different, and a lot of it has to do with <coughs> the recipe that they use for this shite. Uh, the, the head is attached with these cowhide straps that's known as vadri. And yeah, so that's, that's sort of like the physical aspect of tabla. So what makes tabla um, really unique uh, is that it has its own language. So just like a language, it will have letters. Um, or characters. So the characters of tabla are na, ten, tete, ge, and ke. Um, there are other ones too as well, but those are the main ones. So when, when you put letters together, you can make words. So a word would be tati da ke tina ke na da. So these are just some words. So then when you have words, you can make compositions, you can make sentences, you can make paragraphs, you can write poetry. And not the poetry that you would give to your girlfriend, it may not have semantic meaning. Although I do write this kind of poetry for Kamala. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's so an example of, of a small poem that rhymes and sort of maintains that male and female relationship is da dati da ge na dati da ge ti na ke na ta dati da ge na dati da ge di na ge na so ti na ki na and di na ge na rhyme and ti na ke na was like the female side and di na ge na was the male side so what that would sound like was right and and we'll get into uh some more compositions as we're going along but that's just a basic overview of that the tabla has a language. Um, so Indian classical music, a lot of people, especially in the West, associate it with like this spiritual discipline. 
And then you've sort of seen that, like, in the 60s and 70s, like, the Beatles were learning from Pandit Ravi Shankar, and they'd go to India, and they would also visit yogis and do meditation and all that. So is there, like, any truth? Like, is, 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 is this music or is this spirituality? And turns out, like, they're, it's, it's all mixed together. It's intertwined, yeah. So originally, you wouldn't go to a concert hall to see Indian classical music. You would go to a temple, and you would use Indian music to to pray like it would take it would take you inward help you focus and then you were supposed to be focusing on like that one single focal point which is God and then a lot of musicians to this day believe that um, practicing music is is one of the disciplines that can help you reach God um, just like prayer or or selfless service like those the music is another sort of avenue to get there <laughs> um, and then we're members of the Sikh faith, and so all of our uh, like divine word is written uh, in rag and thal. So it'll say like rag shiri mela bala, and then the divine word. Um, so that's really interesting because it's it's like when the gurus were deciding, we have this word from God. How do we best convey it to the people? Like, do we tweet at them? Do we like Instagram <laughs> direct tweets. message? Yeah. Like, what do we do? <laughs> Uh, and then it was decided that the best delivery mechanism for God's word to sort of convey the emotion to, even if you're not understanding the meaning, to convey the sentiment um, of that word is Indian classical music. So it, it, it's all intertwined, like we said. Um, there's this concept known as anahadanad, and that means literally like unstruck sound. Um, but the deeper meaning is that it's it's this sound that just exists in the universe it's the sound of the heavens and it is actually the sound of god it is one of the forms that god can take and then there's this uh concept that the spiritually enlightened people on earth are just tuned to this frequency or music they can just hear it and experience it at all times so like yogis or saints or gurmukhs or whatever it may be um, they can just experience this. So for us regular people, <laughs> uh, what are we doing here? Like, what are we? What's going on with like? Why are we doing music? And what about when we listen to music? So then that comes down to the concept of a hatnad, which means it's it's struck. So I'm striking the tabla with my hands. She's striking the samtur with her golems. Uh A singer is like striking his vocal cords. Um, so what's the what's the point of that? And the idea is that a hatnad can bring glimpses or echoes of that anahatnad. And depending on who the musician is, how blessed they are, uh, like how deep they can go in getting you that echo, and then they're able to convey it to the audience, and the audience is able to experience that anahatnad. Um, so yeah, like it's kind of a deep topic, and but you won't meet... Uh, Indian classical musicians that uh, don't sort of have some sort of belief in it or experience in it. I think in my entire career I've met one atheist Indian classical musician and that's it. <laughs> and there was a difference in that music, I must admit. <laughs> right. Uh, so, yeah, this, this is just a touch of it, but uh, like we don't want to get people scared off with religion and spirituality and all that, but we just want to sort of say that it's part, it, it's, of, it. it's part of it. Yeah. All right, so let's get into it. Um, so Indian classical music, we have rag that we play, and that's what our melodies in, are called. Um, I'm going to be talking generally about rag and then specifically about a rag called Yaman. So in general, you could say rag is like a person. Every person has, actually take me, I have um, got this color brown skin, I've got two brown eyes, brown hair, usually in a braid, I'm really short, I'm not going to grow anymore, that's me. <laughs> so a rag is like that too. So a, a rag yaman, for example, has uh, two eyes, which are yaman, uh, in yaman are ga and ni, which are these notes, ga and ni, okay? So all notes gravitate around those. So those are called the vadi and the samvadi, or king note and queen note. Um, and we have two scales, not one, because they both might be different. So the aura, which is ascending, would be... Mm -hmm. 
Nijegama Dani Sa. So I omitted two notes on the way up there. And on the way down, you play every single note. Sani Dapa Magarisa. Okay. So just with those two rules, if I didn't play the scale that way and the scale down, as I said, it'd be like, I'd pretty much be dead <laughs> because you haven't really adhered to the rules. So Yemen would no longer be Yemen. So another example, uh, I'm tuned in the scale of Yemen. Uh, let me play some notes in Yemen. Amazing. <laughs> that was the most amazing non-Yemen phrase I've ever heard in my life. So it wasn't Yemen. Yemen is dead. <laughs> this is Yemen. Not. So, dead. Yemen is dead. Brian obituary. <laughs> We're going to get... Yeah, the Raga police will be pretty it, upset. He will, yeah jail for a long time <laughs> so we have to follow these rules to maintain the person of the rag uh, so another rule is the relationship between each note um, so it could be uh, the relation of uh, ga and ni every note is going to ga Gonna play ga again. That's not sticking to the rule that it has no relationship between one note and the next. So they need to be maintained or death. <laughs> <laughs> There's also something called the pucker, which is like uh, pucker basically means the catch. So it's like a catchphrase. Every rag has it. If you're learned, you will know instantly it is that rag. Um, and it can't be any others. So a general pucker of Yemen is. So if I just played that, it's Yemen. I don't need to say anything else. It's done. Um, also, as people, as uh, we all have our moods and our emotions, so each rag has that too. Uh, so the, the this is called ras, which is nectar or mood. And Yemen's recnect mood would be spiritual, devotional, calm. Um, and there's an idea that rags are usually associated with different times of day. Um, this is an ancient notion uh, to do with you know nature and spirituality from, from the origins of where it began. So this one is of around about dusk, which is four till seven. Not four till seven, sorry. Seven till nine, but depending on where you are, it's going to change. And also, it's not evening now, I have to say. I'm breaking the rules. But I would like to just show you Yemen because it's one of the main beginning rags that we use. Because using all these uh, rules, the sadhana that we do, it becomes from a beginner rag to a master rag. So this is super duper versatile in that, in that manner, which is why I'm using rag Yemen. Okay, yeah, then. <laughs> so if rag is the, the melodic uh, aspect of Indian classical music, um, thal is the rhythmic aspect. Um, and then just, just like uh, Kamaljit was saying that every rag has uh, certain characteristics and attributes and everything, a, a thal does as well. So a thal, every thal, uh, is, so a thal, let's like start at the beginning, is a rhythmic cycle, right? Uh, and so every thal is going to have a number of beats. It could be 16, it could be 7, 9, 11, 3, 6. Um, so that's known as like how many matre are in the thal, the, the number of beats. Uh, every thal has uh, a sum, and that's the first beat of every thal. And this is the most important beat in Indian classical music. It's the one. And again, it goes back to the spiritual origins, uh, like thal is sort of a metaphor for our role on earth um it's that we're here for many cycles uh and on each cycle we're trying to get better and we're trying to reach the one and so the compositions are are designed that way like we were we're coming up with all kinds of intricacies we're trying to hit that one sometimes we'll tease the one on a cycle and land a little bit early land a little late just so that when we do hit the one it's even more prominent uh, so the one is the most important beat in Indian classical music. Uh, every thal has subdivisions. So 
Pintal is divided in four, 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 four. Um, it, the thal that we're going to talk about today is Rupak. Um, that is a seven beat thal, so it has seven matre, uh, and its division is three, two, two. So the way you divide things is there's this clap and wave system in Indian classical music. Uh, the, you, you clap, which is the thali bit, and then there's kali, which is where you wave. And so the claps represent the male subdivisions, and the kali represents the female subdivisions. Usually the kali is at the halfway point, but not always. Um, so in the thal that we're going to talk about today, rupak, the, the kali and the sum are the same. The one is female, <laughs> uh, which is appropriate for this, this weekend. This wonderful weekend. Um, <laughs> so uh, the last aspect of a thal is that it needs a teka. Right? And this is a, an arrangement of bowls or those characters that follow the, the attributes that we just talked about. So a teka will have the right number of beats, it will have a sum, and it will be subdivided correctly. So rupak's teka is ten ten na ten na ten na ten ten na ten na ten na one two three four five six seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So you saw that the the Kali and the one were open, and then the four and the six, which were the two males and were represented by din, were had claps. And that is Thal Rupak. So I don't know how if you guys have been to Indian classical concerts or have heard uh, a lot of Indian classical musicians talking about the music. But one of the main things that it, they all say is that Indian classical music is an improvised art form. It's it's a free form. Uh, it's it's completely improvised. But then we just gave you like two gazillion rules. <laughs> so if there's all these rules you have to follow, like how how is that improvisation? And so the analogy we like to give is that if you gave an artist or several different artists uh, the rule to paint you uh, paint a tree using blue and gold as your main colors every artist is going to give you a different painting and everyone that looks at the painting will be like yeah it's a tree and it's using blue and gold <coughs> so they follow the rules and everybody can tell that it's a blue and gold tree um, and so that's the same sort of thing that can be applied to any classical music so Gamaljit will adhere to the rules of the rag I will adhere to the rules of the tal and uh, will will find new ways of doing those things but of following the rules but will present something new every night and so there's this idea of uh freedom within in discipline um and so like and again like so if if Gamalji plays rag rup, rup uh yaman and i play thal rupak um like that could be different on a monday and a tuesday pretty much right um depending on what we're bringing into it what our moods are um and then Again, from musician to musician, that's all that will vary as well. Okay, so we've given you lots of information. If you have any questions throughout this, you can uh, write in the comments box and we'll find out um, on our little screen as well. Um, but now we're going to get into this whole improvising business. Uh, so we're going to start with Rag Yaman and Rupak Thal. Um, I'm going to build a, an idea with you and then see where it goes, add things, subtract things, where will it take us, we'll see. Okay, so let's take the Gar of Yemen and build something in seven. Uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna fill everything in first and show you how we break it down and make it more beautiful, hopefully. So, uh, just when there's gonna be playing, keeping the take as well while I play just so we know it fits into seven. Yeah. All seven. Sounded a bit childish though, a bit too full. So as musicians, we have to find the space and make it the whole phrase uh, fit within the silence and the actual striking of notes to make something a bit more beautiful. So let's try that. 
Some heavy, some soft. Add some slides too. Let's go work. we always have to think of ways to make something beautiful so we're always whittling down right. if usually whittling down and not adding on top because <laughs> th that's how we get to the nitty-gritty and just the grain of beautiful perfection <laughs> gotta find that diamond yeah <laughs> diamond yes so we've got um we've got a theme set up now so what else do we do with the theme that's not the end of it um there's so many other things more other things that we can do so maybe I'll try and do some fans or some fast runs at the end of the tail. So this Rupik was going on, but I was actually playing four sevens in the cycle yeah. of one seven. Okay? So it was actually 21 in seven. Do 14. Sorry. We're playing two cycles. <laughs> 14. Yeah, sorry. 14. Two, two, four, two sevens in one of his sevens. So in the second seven, my second seven, I'm gonna stick in a tail and get back to gar. So we're always finishing on gar and starting from gar, which is this, <laughs> okay? different types of tails. There's one that was really full, one that was more open, which is more a lap style, and then one that was a hybrid of the two, and one which had a motif at the end, which is called a bihai, which is a unique, beautiful thing in Indian classical music where you finish it with a... Sometimes you know it's gonna hit, sometimes you don't know it's gonna hit, sometimes it's really, really long, sometimes it's so tiny, so all these things have added a more interest and beauty to the beautiful, already beautiful theme that we'd come up with, but we have to keep on going. So as musicians, we have to go through our sadhana, we have to do mindful practice, um, not just for claps, <laughs> <laughs> but to adhere, make the rug beautiful and be able to share it with others. And hopefully we'll feel the glimpse of rug and, and from where it came from the divine and pass it on to you guys but it's a lifelong journey just to get to what I just played now <laughs> um, so if there's uh, any questions um, oh here we have yay hi Dan okay so he says most rugs I've heard start with a slower meditative tempo and a re relatively few notes being played and finish very quick tempo with many many notes is there a reason for that yeah so it's how the the many faces of the rag progresses. So at the beginning of a performance, there's actually a section which is called the alab, which is without tabla. Uh, in this in this section, you have to ring out every possible uh, c combination of beautiful phrases in rag Yaman um, to show the beauty of it in its whole entirety using, and it depends, like, if you're talking about vocal composition or if you're talking about uh, instrumental. Uh, instrumental uh, instruments have the, the, the advantage of being struck or um, plucked. plucked, yeah, or bowed. So we have the added advantage of we may have two notes or we can uh, make a no motif that we can keep going. So in the alap, there's actually three sections in that too. The, uh, the section where it's very open, like this. Well, 
but we're actually unfolding and unraveling the rag so we'll always start on the sa so in terms of yaman we'll be going to nide and then embellishing the sa because it's the bass and then the ga so we it's pretend it's all in darkness and that's the only spotlight and then we open the spotlight further and further and further until you see the whole rag then we add a, a pulse or a beat <laughs> rhythmical element because that's what this instrument has a lot of so we have to put those two together melody cannot exist without um, the rhythm so this instrument is perfect to and strong in both elements so we do that and then you have to show you're technically amazing too come on now we're performing <laughs> musicians and entertainers as well as being spiritual so that's when you do the <laughs> Did a beautiful, pristine ragyaman. You showed how awesome I am. Oh yeah, we've got to play the tabla now. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to do all of that again, but in the context of rhythm and tabla. So you do the same thing again, but you have well, this time you have a a, a gut or a or the main melody to always come back to. So those are our launching points um, to explore the rag. So I made a theme. So you have that theme and you always improvise, 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 come back. So that's where you get the analogy of, ah, yeah, it's kind of like jazz because they have a head and then they go off into improvisation land and they come back. Um, and the tech guy is always playing and then they do the same thing. But we'll get we'll get onto that. Right. <laughs> um, I think the main, the, the, like the main thing is that on every single section and as it's building up, a new aspect of the rag is being conveyed. Yeah, being revealed. Um, so like what you play in a lop is different than what you would play in the gut. And yeah. and yeah, and then as the tempo increases, the, the, the mood is also changing, yeah. so it's a new mood of Raman, Yemen. And you show different things, yeah. So it's each yeah. mood of Raman, Yemen from slow to waking up in the morning, feeling all like, uh, I need some <laughs> coffee, uh. And then, oh yes, this day is awesome. So it's just progressions of, you know, waking up. Yeah. It's like an arc of the day, so an arc of the life of the of Rag Yemen. Right. Was there any other questions? Man, I blathered on for ages with that question. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Hi, Wen. Um, I like your analogies. Yeah, it is. They're different personalities and rags and rules for all pa yeah, for painters. <laughs> okay, keep popping them up. We're going to read them as we go along. Um, but let's go to back, hand it back to just when then I'll tell you about how to improvise on the tabla. Right. So Kamalzit spoke about what what a santur would be doing and how how she would improvise, and she just <coughs> gave a small example of you know how to. Ex expand on ga and expand on the theme of sevens. So what's a tabla player doing during an Indian classical performance? Um, that and we're, we're seeing uh, we're in an accompanying role um, and that's known as sangat. And sangat itself is like a pretty big art form. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty difficult because you have to uh, meet and match the temperament of what Komaljeet is trying to say and do. So whatever message she's trying to give, you need to give that message as well. The problem is, there's a, that's not like, you know, just written down on a piece of paper, but like, here, these are the messages I want to give, <laughs> right? You got to have like a PhD in psychology and like have some ESP mind reading, <laughs> uh, to figure out what the heck is going on over here. Um, and like I said, not only that, like where it varies, uh, from artist to artist, so like when I, if I'm accompanying a sitar player or vocalist, and then there's different genres, you have to adjust uh, quickly and like on the spot to what what the the demands of of the artist you're accompanying uh, has. Uh, and then within just one artist, that changes day to day as well. So like you saw that Kamaljeet could play, um, you know, like those sevens, and and she could just sort of hone in on the ones with the really fast tails and like she's uh, has a, a performance that's really rhythmical or she could just like the next day be completely 
like you know what i'm just gonna explore like the openness of this dog and just stay in between like all the sliding and 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 so you have to know what to do so there's lots of aspects when doing sangat but let's just talk about the two the two main things that are going to happen during a performance the first one is teka you have to play teka <laughs> um and this is while like you know she's exploring the rag um so you have to play teka in a way that uh matches the temperament of the rag and so if the teka for rupak right is then then na then na then na then that's pretty boring and it would like <laughs> Give you a headache if a tabla player was just going. I have an app for that. I don't. Need yeah, you. there are th- there are apps for that. You don't need a real tabla player if 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 that's all you're looking for. Um, so let's let's take some examples of of what can be done in take up, right? Um, so I'll recite them first. If you can just give me some gut there. So let's start with the basic one, right? Then then na. Then, na, then, na, then, then, na. So, like we said, that's a bit boring. Then, 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 da, 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 then, then, da, da, then, then, da, da, then, 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 da, da, get a then, then, da, da, get a da, get a da, da, di, da, then, da, da, then, then, get a then, then, da, then, then. So you, you want to kind of have a play, but you need to make sure you're not disturbing the main artist. So I can give some examples. That's just whatever came to, to mind. Um, so, it's really important for a tabla player to have a uh, rag dadi, which is a knowledge of rags. And to be honest, I have never met like pretty much once you're past beginner level, <laughs> yeah. a tabla player that doesn't have rag dadi. They all they all like have rag dadi. They can all like compose. They can all do things. It's just part of the training. Um, so. Like when Kamaljit is playing rag yaman, and I and I know that the temperaments and moods are like there's peace, there's uh, bhakti ras, but there, there's also a playful en- element, right? Um, then there's something like rag beragi, which is a morning rag. It's heavy and sad, or like rag shiri, which is that's even more heavy. <laughs> um, so how you play teka in those rags are going to be different, and it may not be like a. So everything that I'm saying, by the way, is like there's all these decisions and all that, but they're happening on an unconscious level, right? Yeah. So uh, in Rupak, like if I wanted, if Kamaljit was exploring more of the playful element of Yemen, right, then I would like play a teka like. <laughs> right? That's but in shitty. Or Beragi or, you know, Gunkali or something, you wouldn't, you wouldn't play Teka like that, like ever. You would just go like. <laughs> you would, you would make it heavier, you would leave more space, you would, you would do things like that. So knowing the Ragdari is, is important for a tabla player. Okay, so then the next aspect is soloing. So... Uh, the tabla players within a concert or performance are given opportunities to take a solo. So what do you do? Do you just like play as hard and as fast as you can and get the most claps and like and win? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's not what you want to do. Um, there, there is a lot of things. There's a lot of decisions that happen, and again, they're all on an unconscious level. We're not. You know, someone doesn't throw a solo to us, and then we just go, "Hmm, which one should I do?" <laughs> um, Let me look through my. But image. just to outline some approaches, right? Uh, there's uh, so let's let's say that uh, a solo was given to me. Kamaljit came back. Me with a nod. Right? Yeah, she fi- she finished a the theme no. and came back, <laughs> and says it's time to take a solo. Um, so the first thing that you can do, and this is a pretty popular approach today, 
is she played uh, sevens, uh, so she was exploring the theme of sevens, and so I can explore that same theme. So she uh, established a rhythmic idea, and I will just t continue that rhythmic idea. And this is sort of following with like that she's the driver, and we can only go where she takes us, right? That's one approach. Um, so, for example, like the theme that you played a couple slides ago. Seven. What was that? I already forgot. <laughs> right. So I can just match that. I started playing different things and went a little faster I never left her theme and again that's because we're sticking with okay she is the sole driver of this performance um, that's uh, that's fine and that's that's one definite approach um, but there are also <laughs> and, and, and we use that uh, sometimes as well too uh, but what if she doesn't want to be the sole driver she's like can you take over for a bit like Ugh, I'm uh, bored. Will you stop taking my idea, please? Right. <laughs> yeah. So there's there's that. Um, it, can you? Um, so like, yeah. You, uh, I took her idea, um, but then so, what if she's exploring just sliding and the rag, and she didn't establish a rhythmic Don't idea at all. Nothing. <laughs> so she doesn't give me anything to play off of, or like like we said, she wants me to take over the driver's seat for a little while and at that point you got to make your own independent you have to you have to make your own independent idea right and that's useful for it keeps the performance dynamic as well right um also like she may hear something that i play and 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 go from there so if instead of playing sevens maybe she throws it back to me and i play you know two fives and a four instead of two sevens um, or or whatever it may be, uh, the point is that like you you don't always have to play their idea, you you can come up with your own independent ideas, and and then within that you know own independent idea, you can still match the the temperament or the emotion of what she was conveying, even though it's an independent idea, right? So if she's just doing like you know single strokes and hasn't really uh, gone into her fast thons yet you can match that temperament by also just staying at single strokes or you can match that temperament so there's something in tabla there's a misconception that if you play fast then it can't be sweet or that you're overtaking but um, I, I, I don't uh, I don't really agree with that approach because you can right like you can I'm playing fast here Um, so you can you can play fast and still have a, a sweet temperament, and so you can it, you can match the temperament of the main artist, right? Versus like um, it's the same bowl that I can play it this way, or uh, it, I change the fingering technique, I change the volume, I added bina. So there's there's ways to match the temperament of the artist. There's a question here. Um, great analogy of keeping the take on that note. Please explain the concept role of sur in tabla okay um right so sur is sur basically means note or yeah pitch yeah. Per per perfect pitch but then there's this concept of surilla yeah um which is it, a, an artist that has perfect command of pitch and it's got to do with the and emotion, emotion of inherent right. emotion that you're bringing to that no, as well. So the tabla, life, the life. right? Tabla, that's a good question. Uh, tabla has, has definitely has that. <laughs> has that, right? We yep. tune our uh, tabla to the main uh, tonic of the dog, right? So this is at D, and she's at D, which is the sa. But that's not where sur ends, right? That's just, just where it begins. <laughs> you've got two pieces that are yeah. also, you know, have so. So the first thing is your tone, right? Uh, the you can you can sort of 
mute your tone, right? You can, or you can have, right? So that's on the dia side. So that's ringing. Yeah, you don't want, you want it to ring, you want it to resonate, you want it to hit that note, and you don't want like a harsh like, Right? You want you want something open and sweet. Because it also um, helps me as well. Because uh, when you have instrumentalist vocalists, they're singing so the sorry is in the air. You don't want to just chop it down with a dang. Right. <laughs> so then we have Bayam, right? This is probably more of a contributor to sur than the Bayam because this is now static. As long as you've got your tone and it's not harsh, uh, you want uh, you, you can. Your bayan is dynamic. You can use pressure to like uh, get get different notes out of it. But for us, um, it's more rather than the strike. That that's just the strike. It's more about what you do after the strike. So there's like, it, and so you'll see when I'm playing tikka. So that's like I could play da da gena, or I'm playing da da gena, which is like uh, a gamak, yeah. right? And then, uh, yeah. So you, and then there's ways to raise and drop the so like the pitch in performances. So so in tabla is a bit. Right, you still need to keep it in tune. Um, so it's a very important concept. And, you know, just like when you go to a restaurant um, and you're like, uh, I love the enchiladas at this restaurant. And somebody's like, nah, I love the tacos at this restaurant. So when you're listening to tabla, some people are like, I only look at like, did it, it. Like, this guy has the best did it, did it. That's the tabla that I like. So for me, the number one quality that I look at is is what this question is about surswad like who has the most surilla tabla like does this guy surilla then i'll look at his did it after that um uh so sur is a very important part of tabla and it's a good question because everybody thinks it's just a rhythmic thing yeah it's definitely musical okay so let uh what's this question can any rag be played with any dal, or does the rag determine the dal? No, uh, some, any rag can be played with any dal, but some, some rags, rags have gravitate. Good friends. <laughs> yeah, some are like tomato and basil. Right, they just go together. <laughs> yeah, so like dal and rupee, it's like they they're good friends. Like shiri won't be played like at manic speeds. Shiri and jap dal is a good combo. Yeah, right. But um, like. I would say like Yemen's a good rock for everything. Yeah. But yeah, Shri loves Japdal. Uh I've heard a lot of Bairagi and Matdal. Yeah. Uh I don't know if there's a coincidence to that or they just happen to go together well. Yeah, so there yeah. are like as I said But I don't think there's a hard rule. There's no Those hard just, and yeah. fast, it's you, just it's what as long as your composition in that dal uh is expressing the rag the best. Yeah. Right. If the balance of both rag and dal are maintained, you can pretty much play any, any rag and any dal together. Right. Um, so I think I said, okay, we left off at, at the independent idea. Um, then, then then, there's another one, which is, uh, I just named it the poker <laughs> approach, which is, it's a combination of the first two ideas, right? Is if, if she established a rhythmic idea of playing nines over sevens, then it's like, okay, I'll see your nines over sevens. I see them. And uh, I'll raise you 11 <laughs> over 7. So you play a little bit of her theme, and then you go into your own independent idea later. This is also something that's done. Um, it, it, right, so in the idea is not to... Again, we're not one-upping. I'm not raising from 11 sevens to say, ha-ha. Right? I'm so much better than you. Yeah, I won, right? <laughs> the idea is it's a dialogue, Right. That if I, she went to 9s over 7s, I, went, I raised it to 11s over 7s. Now she may start at 11s over 7s and take it to the next level. And that way you're constantly building, building together. Creating something new together. Right. Then the last way is something called Sath Sangat. 
which is this is like so hard. It's super hard and it's something and I it's super are awesome. continuing like we're, we're trying to explore it and do it and learn it um, uh, but the idea is that you're you're gonna solo at the same time as as the as Kamalji. so if uh, yeah I guess it's easier just to explain as an example <laughs> I was like um Should yeah. we take the intel? Yeah, the intel. Okay. <laughs> As you can see, we didn't figure this out because we're stumbling. <laughs> yeah, we're just um, out now. <laughs> but let's just start there. So she played a tarakata, right? Or I don't know what notes you played, but in my head, I heard tarakata. So she can establish that, and now we can just explore tarakata. So Together, you know, let's yeah. explore tarakata. <laughs> Is your super mind meltdown? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's a bit early in the morning for us. We're not in mind meld mode right now. But you saw I caught the tada and we we both she launched into a thon, I launched into something, and we landed together. Um, this is known as hot So there are artists out there. Uh, I'm trying to think of some names. Like okay, Ustad Salam Tali Khan, right? He he preferred Sat Sangat. So if you listen to his vocal performances. Um, there's not a really a point where he'll like look at the tabla player and say play, <laughs> right? I, I mean, if you look at like uh, uh, Pandit Ravi Shankar, like there's points in his performance where he'll put his sitar down, he will keep thali and just enjoy, and then like he gives the tabla player like uh, there's one on YouTube that's like 19 minutes long, right? For 19 minutes, the tabla player is playing a solo, and then his sitar is down. Salamat Ali Khan Saab, like it's a completely different approach, right? Like and uh, it's he didn't give his tabla player like any solos basically his idea was like let's i'm going here together. let's if you can join me join me if not stay back i'm cool either way right <laughs> yeah. so when, when when you heard him with like some tabla players like you know like that were a little more junior they would keep take up mostly because he's going off and it's he's doing his risky, thing yeah. and and then he would come back and and then he's like well, all right try to catch the next one right <laughs> like, yeah, cause you both have whereas to be... you know my my teacher is that uh his teacher is that shakata Singh khan they would just launch launch and they would land Last together time. and there was a great charm to it and that's just one example like there's others as well um but yeah there's that's some of the approaches in 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 doing tabla sangat right like and I, like i said Throughout in with Gamaljeet, I'll probably do all of those, right? At some point throughout the performance, I'm going to do all of those in different ratios on different days. And with some other artists, like you know, if I'm accompanying a certain sitar player, I may only pick the first one because that's what they like, or I may only pick the second one because that's what the other one likes. So yeah, you gotta you gotta figure it out. <laughs> um, we can play something for you guys now if there's more questions before. Whatever you yeah, guys want to do. Any questions? We'll get to... What time is it? We... Daily time. Yeah. Ooh. How has technology influenced the learning and teaching of other oral classical traditions? So, I think time will tell, right? Um, so, right now, it's Zoom <laughs> Zoom is prominent, right? It's a Zoom's in the bot. Strange time. Um, Zoom's lessons, Skype lessons, right? Like, this is all happening now, and they're in like one hour slots. And time will tell it if this will produce the next generation of Indian classical musicians. So for, I'll talk about, you know, we learned in a different way. For us, we were just around our teachers. Um, and I know we didn't live in India, right? But when, when, when my teacher came to California or I would fly to see him somewhere, you know, I've, I've fly to see, flown to see him all over the world. You're just around them and then the lessons aren't from 11 to 12 right mm. it's Come, let's it, hang out. it's like just randomly and it could be late at night could be at dinner 
it could be i remember there's an instance um we were at uh he would he had been invited to dinner at somebody's house and we're eating and the the person went to the kitchen to get like more get dessert or whatever he just turned to me and he goes remember this and then he spit it at me and then the other person uh, brought the dessert in and we didn't talk about it like then you know the rest of the dinner kept going on then like three hours later in the car he was like hey i gave you that thing did you remember it and i'm like uh no <laughs> um and he's like okay we'll remember it now and then so it, it was it's like constant like then you were you know you went to like backstage with them you went um you know to the recordings you you went to all the concerts so the the lessons at the tabla weren't as important as those lessons because that's where the stuff came out um so yeah time will tell about this technology thing i mean we we started teaching uh, 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 a few years ago and that was you know lessons were seven to nine p.m and that also helped us because we have young children uh but i don't i don't know right we're I don't know if this is good or bad for Indian classical music. Yeah. <laughs> we, we don't know yet. Is the Santur tuned chromatically? Um, no. <laughs> In the Fundish of Kumashama style, it's not tuned chromatically. So you probably saw, I was only playing on the, the right side here and a bit down here. So... <laughs> is the only side that Yaman is tuned to. So you can kind of think of it as uh, these are the notes that we need uh, for the rags that have 12 notes and everything else, if I'm playing two rags in a concert, it will be tuned all onto this side. So if I play a rag for 45 minutes and then I go, oh, I've got 15 minutes, I want to do something different. You have to retune everything, three strings on each, on each bridge, retune, retune, retune. To the next piece. Um, if I was doing something like session work for film scoring or an, a type of recording and it's not to rag, <clears throat> that would be tuned chromatically. But when we're talking about Indian classical music, not at all. Santhu is a strange, it's the only instrument where you have to just retune the whole thing because in sitar you just move a couple of frets, tune a couple of thurbs, good to go. <laughs> I've got to do a bit more work um, but yeah, it's not chromatic. <clears throat> uh, for beginner students, sitting position is quite painful. Any advice to adapt to the posture for being a star player? Find a good yoga video. <laughs> the thing you have to, as long as they're with having a good mind, keeping your these muscles and uh, the muscle you need to play good. We sit on the floor a lot, and in the West, it's a problem because we are used to slouching on. Uh, on couches we don't generally sit on the floor we have uh, ergonomic chairs for when we do our hours and hours of computer work yoga <laughs> is 100% what you need for a beginner student even if it's only a little bit get some lower hip openers because it does if you have to have, you have in that position where you're oh, I can't do it because my headphones where your spine is a little bit twisted because your leg goes over your other leg if it's the light hand sub style if it's a uh, ribishanka style it's still your knees are still a little bit crossed so it does put a lot of pressure on your back and your lower hips so best advice i can give you is find a good hip opening yoga video yeah definitely and then and uh, even stretches for like the all the muscles you use because it's awkward positions even for sandhu play you have to the whole body is playing the instrument, not just your two little fingers and your right. two little hands. And we're, but the point is, you know, with practice, you'll you'll get it. Yeah, your body you'll will sit get with, used to you'll, it. For, yeah. at, you know, at the beginning, you'll be five minutes until your legs are dead, and yeah. then you'll get to like seven minutes, and then ten, and you'll get better. Also, and we're at a pandemic right now, and we haven't done concerts. That's why I'm fidgeting. And we're so fidgeting much. like crazy right now <laughs> because we've lost our yeah. habit, right? Plus, uh, if you do get dead legs, awesome tip. Do some cardio because your heart will get strong and you will be able to push the blood around the little bend of your knee. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Pro tip. <laughs> yeah. Anything, any other questions? Or That was it so far. So um, 
maybe you guys can play a little and then we can take more comments during and if you want to answer some more at the end. Yeah. Okay. Yep. okay. So like 10 minutes or so? However, however long you like. Okay, whatever you feel. Okie dokie. <clears throat> Let's just stick to the rulebook. Yeah. Rulebook in Yemen. <laughs>
questions, please let us know. If not, ah, here we go. Is Pandit Shiv Kumar Sharma, no, Pandit Shiv Kumar Sharma has a bridge for additional strings. Uh, what does that add to the Santur? Uh, all the strings Guruji has, I have right here. <laughs> um, so every every bridge you see here is a, a usable note, so there's nothing in addition. Um, you may be talking about the, the Chikari, which I used a lot. But there are no additional strings. What you see here is what you get. Thank you for that. Okay, I think those, those were all the comments that I could see on my end. Um, but I wanted to thank you both so much um, for uh, being with us today and sharing your knowledge and your talents. And that was quite an informative um, way to learn about Indian classical music. It was really nice. Um, do you have anything you both would like to share um, about anything upcoming for you? Or I put up your website and your Instagram information so people can stay in touch with you and connect with you. But if there's anything special you would like to share please go ahead and do that yeah just follow us on our social media and um i think we've been hitting the the studio hard because the concerts have been scarce um yes. so there should be recordings coming out soon yeah. um if you want to yeah, join she on... just had a recording with uh grand tapestry featuring alam khan which is out now yeah. that's out now um there's a track uh, called Gulistan with uh, Kai Sisar and Neelam Jeep. Yep. That's out now. Um, and there's there's some more that have been recorded and they'll just... In the pipeline. So yeah. if you want to join our mailing list from our website, or if you just want to join our social media, you'll find out about everything. Yeah. And thanks for having us. Yeah, thank so you. Now, my pleasure. I think it was a great way to keep the joys and the highs of yesterday going to... Yeah. You know, <laughs> so like uh, some of you mentioned, this is a really um, momentous weekend and lots to celebrate and to feel good. So. I think music was a great way to um, keep that going. So um, thank you to you both. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take you off, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the uh, live stream. But thank you again so much. And please, everybody, do follow them and stay in touch with them. Thank you, Kamal. Thank, you, so thank you for having us, and thanks for thank listening, you. everyone. Thank you. Um, thank you all so much for joining. We really appreciate you being here, and we miss seeing you all in person. Uh, please tune in for our next event, which is on uh, December Ninth, featuring a concert with Kiran Aluwalia and Rez Abasi. Um, that's at 7.30 p.m. And please stay in touch. Follow our um, our social pages as well, District of Raga. We have um, a website page, and we're also on Instagram. So please do check that out, and you can join our newsletter to find out about our upcoming events. And we hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. Thank you for spending this time with us, and we'll see you next time.